Okay. So we were looking at uh, Word of Wisdom. Okay. Some things that we need to keep in mind when it comes to Word of Wisdom, how is it uh, received? It is in the same manner as uh, when God speaks. You know, this is all, you know, it has that common thing. But there are certain things that that could stand out when it comes to a word of wisdom, right? So uh, we need to understand that. So that is why we said, you know, it could be an inspired, premeditated, unplanned speaking of wisdom. You didn't plan, come with a strategy, but as you began to you know, talk to them about the problem, and then here comes the solution, right? And it is not that you are experienced in this, you're not qualified in it, but then God put that wisdom in your heart and you are just sharing that out, okay? So um, you see that. Okay, so what are when it comes to sharing the word of wisdom, how, here are some things that we need to keep in mind. Okay, so a word of wisdom comes like a counsel, right? It's a, it's a counsel, uh, a, a word that actually solves a puzzle. It could be an instruction, right? It could be something asking someone to do something. Okay, why don't you try it? So the thing is to keep in mind that we cannot force the person, or we should not force the person okay let's say if joseph said okay this is what it is so you know go ahead and build those bonds or those storage places now if the king said okay uh, i don't know i'm not too sure about that it's okay now joseph cannot go and force the king or should not no. now of course you cannot force someone who's uh, you know in that uh, place of position of power but let's say you know Today's world, we are talking, you know, maybe among friends or maybe among someone who's come for prayer. You say, okay, this is what God is saying that you need to do this. You need to go here and do it. Don't force that person. No, don't say this. God has spoken. Do it. No, don't force it. Just, just like how you would submit that word of prophetic word, or you know, just submit it and say this is what it is. But you pray, you ask God, and please, you know, you you do it accordingly. Okay, submit it again. So do not manipulate, do not force, do not compel. Okay. So encourage. Encourage them in these areas. In the sense, see, here comes a word of wisdom. But they need to persevere and they need to be diligent to do it. It doesn't mean that it's going to be, you know, if I don't really pursue that. Okay. Um, if the king did not pursue building it. Well, then the whole word of wisdom actually it's not really coming to power. It's not effective, right? It's not effective. It's a word from God. It's supernaturally imparted, but it's not effective unless I act on it. And if to act on it, I need to be diligent in the sense I need to be focused. I need to, you know, really take those steps. It's going to be work. It's going to be work. Okay, so it's not something that uh, I can just say, "Oh, okay, God has spoken. It will happen. I'll just leave it." God is saying, okay, this is what you need to do. I mean, take some steps. Maybe I need to learn certain things. Right? Maybe I need to equip myself. I need to upgrade my skills you know, in order to be able to do it. Right? So don't forget that part of persevering to do something. You know, It could be hard work. It could be diligent work that is required. So we need to do that. Okay. Um, so don't be under pressure to... Uh, so that's one thing. And the other thing is, don't be under pressure to convince the person to agree. Do you agree? Do you agree? Do you agree? God has spoken. Don't put any emotional pressure. Don't put any, you know, don't blackmail them. Leave it. Don't compel. Don't force. Right? It's a word. Submit it. You leave it. Like how God would speak to us. Right? It is actually God speaking to man. right? And he's using us to express himself. So... Do not compel, do not force, uh, leave it at that. Okay, so that's, uh, you know, again, word of wisdom. Right? It's uh, wisdom, supernaturally imparted, which could solve, which could be maybe a wise counsel. And it's like a missing part in a puzzle. Okay. Um, uh, how many of you have done puzzles, picture puzzle, right? All small, small, small pieces you put together and then, and one. You know, maybe a few pieces are not making sense at all. You know, just trying to you know go through it and it's not happening. But once you get that, then what happens? The picture is complete. Now you're able to see. Okay, this is what the picture is. Right. So the word of wisdom is like that. It it is like 
the last piece or last few pieces in the puzzle, you put it and then the thing becomes complete. And it's the counsel or the wisdom that actually sorts the problem. Right. OK, so um, word of wisdom. Let's move on to the next one. Next one is word of knowledge. So when we look at word of knowledge, now this is information. Okay, It is information again. It is not wisdom, but it is information. It could be information about a person's past. It could be a situation about the past, or it could be about the present. It, it usually. So it's information, word of knowledge. Again, it's not right from birth till you know uh, every information or everything about that person. This is your birthday. This is your phone number. There's no. It could be just. It is just a word. Right? It is a part of it. So sometimes people say, you know, against about the prophetic and kind of thing. This person prophesied so many things, but he didn't know about this about this person. Like as if to mean. You know, if somebody is prophesying, they should know everything about the person. Right? Good, bad, ugly, everything. No, it is that's wrong. Right? That's a wrong conclusion. Because we know in part and we prophesy in part. Right? Very clear. So it's a part, it's a word. Right? So don't put yourself under pressure. Oh, I didn't know about this person, about this aspect of this person. No, what God revealed, you know. And that is what it is. Right? So it's a word of knowledge, it's information. So what happens is that when there is a word of knowledge given, the person who receives that word of knowledge suddenly realizes, hey, there is a God in heaven. And God knows about me. God loves me. God cares for me. He's not just left me. He knows he cares. And that's what a word of knowledge actually brings. You know, because. You are there. You don't know anything about that person. You you might be a stranger. Or you, you know you and you're revealing under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit some information which is totally you know which is new to you. And it is it is known to them. But then you share that, and that person is completely blown away. Why? Because they know that okay, there is God. You know, he knows. Only He knows this, and He has revealed this. So he knows me, he loves me, he cares for me, he's involved in my life. So problems, situations from the past that God is trying to address or reveal, solve, that those are revealed. And then it gives us information about what God is doing in their life. You know, God is doing this. You know, don't worry, God is doing this. He's opened the doors, he's opening these things, he is taking you forward, he is you know, leveling out all those mountains, he's doing this at present in your life. You think there's nothing happening. But then God is involved. He is doing it, right? So it reveals what God is doing at present in our lives. He reveals what He's going to do in the future in our lives, uh, and so on. It's a small piece of infinite knowledge, of infinite knowledge that God has. It's a small piece, That's similar to the word of wisdom. Okay. Some Old Testament examples would be um, how Saul, uh, Saul the donkeys were lost. And uh, Samuel gives him that word. Now Samuel has not gone and found the donkeys, right? Nor now Saul is searching for those donkeys, but and uh, he's searching for them in, a, in in another place. And this is what Samuel says. Samuel says, "Your donkeys that were lost three days ago, do not be anxious about them, for they have been found." Right? Now in a world where there was no no internet, no email, no you know WhatsApp, whatever. How did Samuel know? Samuel knew by the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. He received that information, that word of knowledge. He received from God Himself, right? So, word of knowledge, we see that, and then similarly, Elisha and Gehazi, uh, you know, and Naaman's um, servant. I mean, Elisha's uh, servant. So he goes and he says. My master says, OK, this is what, you know, after he's healed and all that, this is what my master requires. But then that you know, he lies, right? And, and then Elisha says, OK, when you went and asked, did my spirit not go with you? Did, did I not see it? He received in his spirit this information, which Gehazi thought nobody will know. He received it in his spirit. Right? In the New Testament, see this you know, example of 
the Lord Jesus meeting with Nathaniel. Okay, so he has his meeting with Nathaniel, and uh, he declares something. He's just meeting him for the first time, right? And he declares, um, "Here's Nathaniel. Here's a man in whom there is no guile. There's no hypocrisy. Uh, innocent person." Uh, he doesn't have anything hidden in his heart. Well, that's what it means, right? He has in, in whom there is an Israelite in whom there is no guy. So Nathaniel is surprised. He asks, you know, how do you know me? We're just meeting. How do you know me? And uh, maybe people have told Nathaniel, hey, Nathaniel, you know, this is your you're a man of character. Yeah? You know, you you don't have any of this thing. You don't hide anything from us. You're a straight talking dude. So he's surprised. How do you know me? And uh, the Lord Jesus says, before I saw you, you know, uh, this is what he says, right? Um, before Philip called you, when you were under the fig tree, I saw you. Okay. Before Philip called you, you were under the fig tree, and I saw you. So the Lord is saying, okay, this is what I saw. This is what I received. And we know that he was anointed by the Holy Spirit. He went about doing good. Everything, the earthly ministry was by the anointing, the power of the Holy Spirit. Right. So we see this. Um, again, the Lord Jesus, and he was having the conversation with the woman at the well. Right? The Samaritan woman comes and he says, Go bring your husband. She says, I don't have a husband. And then he says, You know, yes, you're right. You have had uh, four husbands, and the one with whom you are living with is not your husband. Okay. Five husbands, sorry. So, um now that woman again is, is very surprised, shocked. Um, but the thing is this, okay, which leads us to the next thing. How should the word of knowledge be be released? How should we minister in this gift? She heard these words from the Lord Jesus, you know, about her past. You had five husbands, the one whom with whom you're living. The sixth person is not your husband, which means you're not married, but it's a lived relationship. And you see the response of the person. You know, she she said, I perceive you're a prophet. Right? And then he, she goes and she she's in fact joyful. She's going and meeting others and saying, Come, you need to meet this man who told me. So which means that the word was delivered not in a condemning manner, saying, Hey, you woman. Shameful, not in a condemning manner, but in a very redeeming, restoring, right? But truth, truth spoken, right? No holding back the truth. Five husbands, you're not living, I mean, you're the person who will be living with, it's not your husband. Truth was spoken, but it was spoken in a way, like we can just, we can, we can come to a conclusion. It was spoken in a way which was very redeeming, restoring, transforming. That she went out and she became an evangelist, literally. She said, Come see Jesus. You need to hear Jesus. Right? So, uh, which, which leads us to the next thing, you know. Uh, this is how we need to uh, release a word of knowledge. Be loving and gentle, be clear, be specific, validate. You know, maybe we need to check. Uh, maybe we need to ask them sometimes, you know, this is what, you know, is there anybody like this who's having this condition? I'm just sensing that uh, maybe there's someone here who has this condition. Validate, test, no problem, right? You can. And, um, you know, sometimes it's a, it's a, it's a risk, right? You, you ask, okay, I just sense that God wants to, um, you know, financially bring something into a person's life, and you've been struggling, and then you ask something, and then nobody lifts your hands. Nobody lifts, uh, saying things fine. And don't get discouraged, you know, because after the meeting, somebody can come personally and say, "I actually I didn't want. I wanted to lift, but I was feeling scared." It happens all the time, right? Uh, when when you when you do that personally, privately, people come and say, "Okay, actually I was there, but I wasn't sure, uh, and uh, I I was feeling a little embarrassed." So. Okay, so take risk, no problem. Okay, and it's okay to make a mistake, right? It's because you are, we are, you know, we are growing, uh, we are learning. Okay, so how is it received? Like the same way, how is the word of knowledge received? Words, sentences, 
uh, impressions in our heart through our spiritual senses. Um, you know, maybe it is an inner impression visually. A lot of times, you are seeing something, you are seeing a scenario, seeing a picture, moving pictures. A word of knowledge is received. You know, sometimes it's um, you know it's interesting. No, sometimes it's uh, it's n faces of people whom you knew. Okay, let's say you're sharing in a congregation, and uh, as you're praying, you're getting a you're reminded of this person whom you know, the name and everything you know, but that face comes over and over again. Okay, so do, just don't you know discard it and say, okay, chah, why am I thinking of this person at this time now? Maybe it's a relative, maybe it's a friend. Right? Now just think about it. Okay, what is God actually telling me? I, had, I was not, absolutely not thinking about that person. Why? It could be there is a person in the group with the same name, right? Maybe I'm. Oh, I'm just thinking of my brother. Okay, brother's name is David. Okay, um, and maybe you know I know that he went through this challenge. So, you know, is there a David here? Uh, is there somebody called David? And uh, and there's a David, and then you are going through this particular season in life. You then you share, and then David stands up, right, saying, "Okay, uh, how did you know? I didn't know. God knew, but God revealed. God spoke." Right? So these are ways, where was, like you can say, "God, can you make it simple? <laughs> right? Can you just send me a text on my phone so I can just look at it, read it?" God chooses to do this, reveal this in our hearts, right? In all these ways. And we see that visions, dreams are actually the language of the Holy Spirit through the ages, not just now, through the ages. Like he says, you know, in all those scriptures that we saw, Hosea and Numbers, we see that this is how he chooses to speak. So uh, it's good that we position, that we train ourselves to receive from what he's saying. Of course, validating with the word of God. It's not contrary to the word, and so on. Okay, um, it could even be a physical sensation. Okay, now word of knowledge is saying, but well, somebody with some condition, maybe there's someone with a pain in the ankle, right ankle, and you know you you're feeling something in your right ankle, or you're feeling something in your right hand, or something like that. So be aware of that also as a ministry. Uh, uh, sometimes it could be because you're standing for a long time, <laughs> right? So don't say, oh, you know, somebody, you know, with the right hip. No, it's not that. Something, sometimes it's visual, right? You see uh, this happened, you know, while we were praying in, uh, in a uh, Sunday service. And uh, I just closed my eyes. I just saw lungs, you know, like how you learn in a biology class, you know, lungs diagram. So immediately knew, yeah, God wanted to do something, uh, obviously, to heal. When he's showing showing that there's a condition, he wants to do something, intervene. So, yeah, so he shared, okay, maybe uh, you know somebody with a condition like that, and so uh, it could be visual, or it could be something to do with some physical sensation that you are feeling. Uh, be mindful of that. Be aware of that as well. Right? Okay. Sharing that. Thanks for sharing that. Okay, so Chaya asked the question: When we um, when we pray for someone and we start crying, is it our emotions or the Holy Spirit? Well, it could be both, of course, because maybe the Spirit of God is, uh, you know, described a situation. You know, maybe you're praying for someone and then you feel moved uh, out of compassion. Uh, out of something that God is revealing, it could happen, or um, it could be the compassion of the Holy Spirit, you know, that you just sense, uh, which has moved you emotionally. Is, sometimes something happened to me, like uh, very embarrassing. Actually, thing is, um, at one one Sunday service, we had all our outreach pastors uh, at that particular location uh, where I was ministering, and then. Well, the thing was to introduce them to the congregation and to pray for them. So they all came one by one. and then So I just introduced all of them. Till then, it was OK. But when I started to pray, I started crying. 
Right? I was just praying for them, and I was just choking up, crying, very embarrassing. And people are wondering what's wrong with the pastor. You know, why? Why is he? You know, he's just praying for these outreach pastors. Why? I can't. I couldn't explain why, but I just felt so much of compassion, uh, and I was just moved with that compassion. And I, I just felt that God. This is how God sees them. Right? He is. Uh, he sees them as someone precious. He sees them as some. You know, as his children. So yeah, so Chaya, yeah, it could happen. It could be both. You know, it could be you are emotionally moved by the condition, or it could be the emotional, emotion of the Holy Spirit. Um, yeah, just go ahead and pray. <laughs> Hope that helps, right? Okay. So, um, word of knowledge, it could be, you know, it could be even inspired writing. So we said you no know, premeditated. Uh, you know, we do not plan it. Unpremeditated speaking as word of wisdom. It could be even writing. You write something, and uh, God gives. You know, maybe you're. Let's say you want to wish someone on their birthday, their wedding anniversary, and you want to send them an email. You want to send them a letter, whatever. And you just ask God, God, you know, what should I put here? And uh, and you begin to write, right? So that suddenly, you know, these these things come to your heart. And writing about this particular scripture, about this promise, it could be that as well. Right? So don't restrict yourself in any way. It could happen um, just in, in these ways also. Okay. Now, God can do it in very uh, creative ways. He can release a word of knowledge. So, so word of knowledge alerts the person to the presence of God, okay. makes the person aware of the, that there is a living God who knows things about me. Okay. So we looked at prophecy, we looked at word of wisdom, we looked at word of knowledge. Okay. Any questions before we go to um... Yeah, yeah. Absolutely. Visions visions also also. Yeah. So so the thing is this, it, these are in, these are all interconnected. Like how but, but the basic thing is what we are receiving from the Spirit of God. Right? It is an expression of the Holy Spirit. These gifts are a manifestation or a display of the Holy Spirit, expression of the Holy Spirit. Right? So when he speaks, when he reveals, he does it. You know, in all these ways, it could be from a vision, it could be a dream, it could be that also. Yeah, yeah. So personal experience or situation could be um yes, let me use. So let's say you went through. So God reminds you about your own personal experience. Okay, maybe how you uh, overcame a particular challenge, how you took a particular decision. Right. So the Lord is reminding you of that, just like how you were reminded of someone's face and you made that connection. He's reminding you of uh, something that you went through, uh, and then you know. And why are you you know of all Days or of all times, why are you reminding? Why are you thinking about that? It could be that the Holy Spirit is reminding you that saying that okay, here's a person who's in a similar situation. Um, you need to just tell them about that. Okay, so yeah, so initially you could just say, okay, is there someone who's going through, you know, something like this? That would be a way to, uh, and then pray on those lines. Yeah, absolutely. You can, but it's a suggestion, right? It's not a clear-cut uh, instruction saying you must. Yeah, that's the thing. So the other person who's receiving also understands it as a suggestion. Right? So you're speaking, like how would Paul would say, you know, uh, in Second Corinthians, you say, okay, this I'm speaking okay, from my experience, from, from as a person whom God has trusted. I'm saying this. Uh, it's not a direct command from God, but I'm saying he makes the distinction very clear. So yes, you can, of course. Okay. Um, yeah. Any any questions? Uh, yeah. What is the difference between prophecy and word of knowledge? Very similar, 
okay, prophecy, prophecy also has, a, what are the similarities? We see that, okay, prophecy also ha could have a, um, uh, uh, a foretelling nature, futuristic thing in that. Uh, word of knowledge also has something about the present and the future. But prophecy, if you see, from 1 Corinthians 14, we see that it brings, it could be an encouraging word, edifying word, a comforting word. Okay, to say God loves you. It could be just a word like that, you know, saying from scripture or uh, saying uh, God wants you to know that he loves you, he cares for you. But word of knowledge is a little more specific and it goes into the information part. Okay, this is what you did when you were five years old. This is what you did. And God wants to tell you that. Like uh, in one short term Bible college, I was praying for this boy. And I just saw this picture of uh, this boy playing in a tire. You know, it's a uh, swing. So it was actually tied uh, a rope tire on a tree and he was swinging. Uh, so I just told him, like, you know, I see this, you know, you swinging on a tire. And does it mean it? Make it so they said, yeah, actually, I fell down. Okay. I was swinging like this and I fell down and from that time I became very scared of really playing like that and something happened in me, a lot of fear or something. So so I had to tell him, hey, God knows that. God knows, but God doesn't want you to be that way. Right? So it's some specific instruction rather than saying, um, a prophetic word is also, you know, it's like, okay, God is with you. God wants, God cares for you. God loves you. God does not want you to live in fear. But a word of knowledge would be, a little more, you know, it's very specific with this revelation saying this is what happened. So, um, now since uh, Francis asked that question, you know, um, so we don't have to bother too much. See, for the sake of studying, we are studying this. We're saying, okay, word of knowledge, word of wisdom, prophecy. So, when you receive, don't think, okay, is it word of knowledge or word of wisdom or uh, what is it? So, this is so, this is, we are studying this. So that our mind, we can expand our scope of all this and happen. It has a biblical base. And God wants to speak in all these ways to be a blessing to edify his church. So that is all. Okay. We are studying that. But when it actually happens, it will just flow together. Word of knowledge with you know discerning of spirits, with gifts of healing, just flows together. So, uh, so don't analyze in those ways. Yeah. But good question. Yeah. I think we need to know. Wisdom is applying the revelation from the knowledge of the Word of God through the Holy Spirit at the correct time, situation, and person. Yes, uh, technically, yes, Jaya. That is what wisdom is. But then, when we look at the word of wisdom as a spiritual gift, what we are, you know, what we've been talking about, it is a supernaturally imparted wisdom. Okay, um, and. Uh, it need not necessarily be applying the revelation from the word of God. It can be a supernaturally imparted wisdom, something to do with the puzzle that you're, you know, let's say, for example, a software engineer, you know, this is what, uh, this is a testimony that came in, uh, you know, some years back. So this person, he had learned about hearing the God, hearing God's voice. So he's a software engineer. I'm sorry, not software engineer, he's a hardware person, an IT hardware person. So there's something wrong with the server. And uh, and there was a inspection. Some clients were coming, and uh, they had to do something. And but there was something wrong with the server. Now he was really you know desperate because um, things are not going right. So then what happened? He prayed. He said, "God, you need to show me. You need to tol tell me. You need to show me what's wrong." And he received a picture. Like when he prayed, God just gave him a picture of the motherboard or whatever the internals of the you know server with the exact place where it was wrong. He had to, you know, something was burnt out or short, some, you know. And he directly went to that and changed that and it worked. Okay, so so that is what we're saying when we say it's a word of knowledge, word of wisdom, sorry. So, well, it's word of God, you know, it does not have that information about the chip and all that, but then God knows, God who wrote the scriptures knows, okay, that is something that is wrong. So this was supernaturally imparted and he went and solved it. Right. Okay. Um, any other questions? No. Okay.
Okay, let's move on to discerning of spirits. Okay. Discerning of spirits. What does discern mean? Discern. Yeah, Nina. To find out. To find out no. Differentiate, yeah. To find out no in the sense it uh, to distinguish, to differentiate, to actually judge, right? To to come to a place of actually sifting through and taking out what is maybe what is best, what is right, what is wrong. Okay. So here, the gift of the spirit we see there's one which is listed, which is called discerning of spirits. Discerning of spirits. So what does that mean? That means that uh, there is a discernment that the Holy Spirit brings in to us. Okay, there's an information that the Holy Spirit brings into us where we are able to discern and say, okay, this is God speaking. This is not God speaking. Okay. Or this is a spirit of error. This is a spirit of truth. Or it could even be our eyes being opened to look into the spirit realm. Eyes being opened to look into the spirit realm. It could be either of that. To, to say whether it's something is of God, something is of the evil spirit, something is of you know just a natural human spirit. You know, this person is, is speaking from their natural or you know, from their natural experience, whatever. And it could also be looking into the spiritual realm. Okay, so uh, how does that help? It helps in, of course, judging. When I say judging, it's not condemning. We are all called to judge rightly. Right? It's to know what is right, what is wrong. Um, so it helps in doing that to determine what is from God, what is not of God, okay, so that I can I can take a decision. I can know how to move, uh, you know, move, move forward. Also, discerning of spirits to uh, to to enable us to know what are the motives. Okay, this is what somebody is saying. But what is the real motivation behind that? They're saying something, it sounds good, but are the motives also good? They're offering this, it sounds good, it seems good, but what is the intention behind that? Is it clear? Is it pure? Is it honorable? Or is there a hidden agenda? Discernment. Now, being suspicious is not discernment. Okay, so sometimes we are very suspicious. Oh, this fellow, he gave me this. I don't know why. He said this. He smiled and said, Good morning. Now, why why did he do that? Maybe he wants something from me. You know, if we are always tuned to thinking like that, oh, he offered this chapati, yeah. I extra meat he put I, something is wrong. I'm, I'm sure he's gonna ask me something, you know, by the end of the day, you know, having a critical, suspicious judgmental kind of a personality trait is not discerning of spirits right that is not that here it's like in a moment the lord jesus uh, the holy spirit reveals to our heart okay this is the real intention watch out or you sense that okay everything is clear green signal no problem it's fine right so it's you see that's again a very very important very valid thing and it builds up people. There's no question of you know, just going into a spirit of error. If we would watch out, if we would obey, um, be uh, okay, be uh, sensitive, right? Motives, intents, what is of God, what is not of God. Okay, so uh, this is different from spiritual discernment. No. So what do we mean by that? Discerning of spirits is something that is imparted to our hearts by the Holy Spirit. Spiritual discernment, you know, like we read, we see that by reason of use, having our senses exercised, we are able to discern between what is good and what is not good. Okay. All believers, you know, and this is a good thing, right? Because uh, we know this is what the Word of God says. We know from experience this is how God, Word of God, I mean, God is led, so this is his character, this is his nature. And then we make a judgment. Okay, as a seasoned or a, as a mature believer, you make a judgment. Right? This is what this is definitely God doing this. You know, this is something that is good. Now that is spiritual discernment. You've you know come to that place of just discerning because of 
your understanding of the nature of God, your understanding of the Word of God, and your experience with God. Right? So spiritual discernment. But discerning of spirits is a supernatural enabling by the Holy Spirit, right? In that moment where he gives that information about, uh, about a particular scenario. This is of God, this is not of God, this is of the Holy Spirit, this is of the evil spirit, and opening our eyes to the spiritual realm. Okay, some Old Testament examples we see are um, uh, Elisha's servant. Okay, um, so Elisha obviously is able to see something that that servant is not able to see. Okay, so so he says, uh, Master, you know this whole army is gathered. You know that's what he says, right? Uh, Allah is my master. What shall we do? And then Elisha says, Do not fear, for those who are with us are more than those who are with them. Right? And then he prays to God and says, Lord, open his eyes. So he sees. What does he see? He sees chariots of fire. The mountain was full of horses and chariots of fire all around Elisha. He, he was able to see. Now, he, of, of course, he was able to see naturally. So when Elisha said, Lord, open his eyes, it means let him be able to see in the spiritual realm, what is there? Okay, so there were chariots of fire and horses and so on. So obviously the angelic, you know, ministry and protection and everything was there all around. He was able to see that, right? So we see that example, and uh, of course, uh, in the New Testament we see uh, the Lord. Uh, we know it was word of knowledge, but also a discerning of looking into Nath Nathaniel's, you know, heart and saying, okay, he's a man. Without guile, and many times we see, you know, the Lord, in the Gospels we see the Lord knew their thoughts, and He knew their thoughts. Now here was here were the people who were asking Him questions as if they wanted to know, Lord, what is this? Lord, why why is this? Why is it like this? You know, should we pay taxes, Lord? What do you think? <laughs> but God knew the intents. The Lord Jesus knew the actual intent. With which they were asking questions, and sometimes they would not. They would have these thoughts: Why is he doing this? Why is he doing that? Does he even know, you know, the kind of person she is, who is breaking that incense and you know, touching him and uh, wiping uh, his feet? Does he even know? But he knew in their thoughts. He knew their thoughts. Sorry. So a, a discerning of spirits, intents of the heart, and so on. Okay, so um, receiving the um, uh, this discernment is uh, again the same way. But we uh, we talked about all the other gifts that we receive an impression, we receive a sense of knowing, we receive could be from the word. Um, so all that, um, but more importantly, it could be a check in our spirit, meaning. It would be like a, like a signal in our spirit. Right? Maybe the Holy Spirit is grieved about something, and you sense that grieving. Right? It, it is something in your spirit, right? a warning, an alertness in your spirit. Oh, no, don't do this. Don't go there. Right? The discerning. Right? Or maybe you know, something is happening, and um, well, uh, everything seems to be fine. But you know, you're meeting that person. Everything seems to be fine. But 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 you you sense in your spirit something is not right. Something is missing. Something is not right. right? So that's uh, you know. So now we need to distinguish between our own suspicions, our own fears. Okay. So that happens, right? With the word of knowledge, also like uh, your own fears. Okay. Uh, I don't know. Should I say this? Maybe it's, I'm I'm overthinking. I'm overanalyzing. We could be thinking that way. Here also, you know, when it comes to uh, you know, these things that the Lord gives or Lord enables you to discern, but then you need to know, you know, is it my own fear of meeting these kind of people? You know, sometimes we are put off by personality types. Yes or no? Yeah. Maybe somebody's very loud and boisterous, and you know, and then we we are like, oh. I, this person puts me off. We, we make a judgment. We are like that. We have the bias. We have the prejudice. And so we need to know, is it because of that or no, is it something else? Right? 
So um, it's a it's a sense of knowing in a spirit, a sense of warning. It could also be a sense of release, sense of freedom. Right? You suddenly sense a well, a sense of joy, a sense of companionship, and you you sense in your spirit, yes, you know, there's a freedom in your spirit right? um, when you're talking to that particular group or you know, with an individual. There's a sense of freedom. There's a sense of freedom in your spirit. So, you know, be aware of that also. Right. So, um, okay. And also, maybe there is a sudden awareness of something is wrong in the spirit realm. Okay. Um, I don't know if you've had that kind of experience where you you know you're sleeping and you and you wake up and it's not your not your normal time of waking up you know it's like uh, you know it's very early in the morning whatever and and you suddenly sense that hey something is wrong so it's a perfectly safe place but you sense that okay something is wrong I need to pray okay. I need to pray and after you pray um, that sense. You know, you're again at peace, and you go back to sleep. You sense that okay, something is. You know, there is a in the atmosphere. You just sense that okay, there is a maybe a evil spirit or a, you know some kind of a disturbance by the powers of darkness and trying to intimidate, trying to create fear, and and you need to pray for those who are with you. Pray for yourself. Okay. Have you experienced that, everybody? Yeah, sometimes. Right. So that discerning on the inside. Is by the Holy Spirit. Maybe we didn't put a name to it. We just said, "Okay, yeah, God showed, God awoke, you know, uh, waking me up, uh, woke me up in order to pray." But that's a discerning of spirit. So it could happen when we are awake. It could happen, of course, uh, you're ministering to people, etc. Okay. Um, again, through dreams, it could happen. Um, you know, you could hear what is there in the spirit realm and all those, um, you know, different ways by which we can receive this. How do you release that? How you operate in this gift? Okay. So the thing is this: maybe somebody is telling you their problem. Okay, You're saying that okay, um, you know, I'm having this kind of a problem, and then you sense that okay, this is not a normal, natural problem. This is there's a supernatural element to it in the sense, not in a good way, not by, by the Holy Spirit, but that this problem has happened because of some spiritual, some demonic entry, some demonic influence. And that's why this person is going through. Right? So how do you minister? Right? With the authority that God has given. The authority that God has given as you're praying, you're breaking that influence of Whatever is controlling, whatever is oppressing, whatever is imprisoning, you you have the authority, right? As a believer, you have the authority. So you take authority and you use the weapons that God has given you. You proclaim the word of God. You issue a word of command. You you know you talk about the, the, what God has done and declare what the Lord has done on the cross, the shed blood of Christ. Use the name of Jesus. All that. And specifically, if, if if God is, you know, revealing uh, a quickened word, a rhema, a sword of the spirit, use that, speak that, declare that, right? Okay. So, uh, so which means that we may have to pray, minister in deliverance uh, to the person, take authority, um, and uh, pray in line with what God is revealing to us. Or sometimes it might just be in that. Hey, maybe I need to distance myself. I need to leave. I, 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 I should not be getting more and more involved. It's like this, this person who was actually, um, you know, ministering to uh, to the eunuchs. Actually, I mean, I actually, wanted to minister to the eunuchs. Um, so he was uh, he was trying to do something, and uh, and obviously that was not the time for him. You know, so. Uh, so when, when he was telling me about it, I just sensed that maybe you know, something is not right. Maybe you should not step in. But then he went ahead and um, he was interacting and trying to do something anyway. And then he came under a lot of oppression. You know, he's, Then we were praying and then, then we were talking and we said, OK, um, did you feel comfortable? Did you feel OK? 
uh, but I was just asking myself that also. And uh, and then obviously it was, you know, God, the Holy Spirit, who was actually, you know, kind of giving a check and balance, saying this is not the time. Okay. Yes, do they need deliverance? Do you do they you know? Do they need to be ministered to? Obviously, right. And there are wonderful ministries, but for that person and the uh, the level of maturity or the level of spiritual authority he walked in, uh, it was not that time for him. Because that was a very strong spiritual stronghold. I was just, uh, just reading about that and talking about it. So we were kind of discussing. So, so the thing is this: that yes, while we definitely need to pray and you know, pray for deliverance, God has given our authority. Maybe for some specific individuals, maybe that's not the time. You know, maybe they are growing as a believer, and that's not the time to just step in and get into that. Because it's spiritual warfare. Maybe they're not equipped. Um, maybe for that season, right? But definitely, God wants those people to be you know, come to the truth and and etc. So you just basically want to share the gospel with them, right? So it could be that it, it could be that okay, I need to distance myself, I need to remove myself from that particular scenario for some time. Okay, it's now is not the time, right? So discerning of spirits. Also, if you feel that. Someone is declaring something over you which is not in agreement. Okay, it could even come like a prophetic word. Okay, uh, declaring something over you which is not really edifying, exhorting, comforting, which you sense that it's not from the spirit of God. So what do you do? You know, you sense that, so you cancel it. You don't receive it. You don't accept it. Okay. Like when I went to visit the doctor. About the eye infection, and so he was saying, "Okay," um, he said, "This is what it is. This is the condition." And then he's saying, "Okay, you may also develop some headache. You may also get some fever. Uh, you may get some cold. Um, so, but don't be worried about it. It's okay. It's part of this whole thing." And then he said, "You, when you may, uh, I was just in my mind. I was just canceling. I, I refuse to accept that. <laughs> I refuse to accept." That uh, whatever I did, I refused to accept the infection. I refused to accept that. I mean, sorry, the the headache and the you know the fever. I refused to accept it. So he's just making a simple statement according to what he knows. He said these are symptoms that could follow. So these are symptoms that you may get. And all the while, I was saying, you know, no, I'm not. I'm not getting it. Cancel that. As it is, I'm having enough frustration with this. You know, all this thing, watering and everything in the eye. I'm not getting it. You see. It. I don't receive it, right? So that is what you need. Sense that okay, this is not of God. You don't receive it, right? Okay, so this is uh, these are some things that we have about the discerning of spirits. Now we have a few more, which is gift of healing, working of miracles, and gift of faith. Okay, and um, how to develop in all these gifts. And there's one more uh, section. Okay, so what? Uh, so this is what I just um, as we come to the end of this uh, teaching session. Just want to say that there will be one more video um, that we will upload. So that we have two videos upload at the end of these two sessions. There will be one more video uploaded. So online class, please check that video, which will be the conclusion of uh, um, this uh, whatever we are learning about the Holy Spirit this semester. And also e-learning class, um, you also check that video. In addition to these two videos, please um, check that video also. Right? Okay. Thank you so much. God bless.